Hi, I'm Justin, and here's my attempt at the Khan Academy challenge, making a program that illustrates why dividing by n minus 1 instead of n is the way to go if you're trying to estimate the variance of a population using a limited sample of that population. The population we'll be sampling in this program is a flat distribution of the integers from 0 to 200. We'll sample in groups of 50 at a time, and so let's add our first sample group. And when we add our sample, the program calculates the variance of the sample using three separate methods. The first method is summing the squares of the deviations from the sample mean and dividing by the size of the sample. And then the same thing, but dividing by n minus 1 and then by n minus 2. And there's a place in the code right here where this is changeable so that it's easy to mess with and experiment with. But for now, I just picked n minus 2. On the graphs on the left side, the colored dots show the variance calculated using the sample mean in that method, and the black dots show the variance calculated using the true mean of the population. If we add another sample group, it recalculates the variances for the whole sample, which now has 100 elements in it, and plots that as the next point. In the graphs on the right side, each point represents one sample group. Here it looks like the first two are pretty much on top of each other. But anyway, the difference between the sample mean and the true mean is plotted on the horizontal axis, and the difference between the respective variances is plotted on the vertical axis. Or in other words, it's plotting how far off the variance is using that method as a function of how far off the mean is for that particular sample. Now if we look at a lot of sample groups, we notice that the variance found using the sample mean and dividing by n always has a lower variance than would be found using the true mean, and it ends up being systematically lower than it should be for a large sample. But using n minus 1, on the other hand, results in a sample variance that is sometimes above and sometimes below the variance found using the true mean. And at larger sample sizes, it doesn't take long for the blue and black lines to join up, and together they approach the true variance of the population. And then looking down below at the green, we see that using n minus 2 ends up overcorrecting, and the variance tends to be too high at large sample sizes. So there's my program, and it's not a rigorous mathematical proof that n minus 1 is the best method, but hopefully it's pretty convincing empirical evidence, and maybe it helps shed some light on how just dividing by n isn't the way to go. Thanks for watching.